one of the conditions of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah between the Muslims and the Quraysh in 628 was this. During the 10-year period of the peace treaty, whoever wishes can enter into the covenant of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and whoever wishes can enter into the covenant of Quraysh. After this agreement, the tribe of Husa immediately said, we enter into the covenant of Muhammad. The tribe of Banu Bakr also jumped up and said, we enter into the covenant of the Quraysh. There was a war between the tribe of Husa and the tribe of Banu Bakr in the days of Jahiliyyah. Because of the emergence of Islam, they had given up fighting and had withdrawn the hands from each other. But the enmity between them was still there. Now the tribe of Husa was under the protection of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the tribe of Banu Bakr was under the protection of Quraysh. For 17 or 18 months after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, both sides remained silent until a man named Anas bin Zunaym from Banu Bakr insulted the Prophet. Unable to remain silent in the face of these insults, a young man from the tribe of Huza beat and wounded the insulter. When the man returned to his tribe and explained the situation, the tribe of Banu Bakr started demanding blood price on the pretext of the man's wound. The elite of Banu Bakr went to meet the Quraysh they asked the Quraysh to help them with men and weapons against their enemies, the tribe of Husa. The Quraysh said, Muhammad does not know what we are doing now. It is night time and no one will see us. They agreed to help with weapons and mounts. So, they agreed and attacked the tribe of Husa at night in Wadir at a time when the Husa were resting. Amr bin Salim, who escaped from this raid by escaping on his horse, came to the messenger of Allah in Medina. He informed him of what had happened. The Quraysh broke their promise to you. They broke the covenant they made with you at Hudaybiyah. They caught us unawares in Wadir, in our own land. They killed us while we were sleeping, bowing and prostrating. They thought that I would not and could not call anyone for help. O Prophet, call the servants of Allah for help. Let the Messenger of Allah be among them. May he turn from color to color in anger at the oppression, and may he be at the head of a great army, foaming like the seas. The Messenger of Allah stood up and said, If I do not help the Huza with what I have helped myself, I shall not be helped either. I swear by Allah, in whose mighty hand is my existence, that I will protect them as I protect myself and my household. Now, spread the news to the earth that those who believe in Allah and the last day should gather in Medina. Upon this call, as many Muslims as there were began to gather in Medina. When Abu Sufyan became aware of this situation, he came to Medina to talk to the Messenger of Allah and prevent him from attacking. No matter who he went to in Medina, everyone turned away from him. He could not get any result and returned to Mecca. When the Quraysh learned that Abu Sufyan had returned without any result, they were alarmed. All the Muslims would soon flock to Mecca. The Messenger of Allah and his army set out from Medina and moved to Mecca.
They camped in a place close to Mecca. Abu Sufyan entered the presence of the Messenger of Allah and became a Muslim. Abu Sufyan said, For the sake of Allah, forgive your people. You are the best of people, the most well-behaved, the most mild-tempered, the most merciful, the most observant of kinship rights. O Messenger of Allah, did you order the killing of your people? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, No, I did not order that. Today is the day of mercy. The Prophet said that anyone who put down his sword in Mecca and entered his house and closed the door of his house would be given amnesty and no harm would be done to anyone who did not resist. In Mecca, polytheists such as Safwan bin Umayyah, Ikrimah bin Abu Jahil and Suhail bin Amr were inviting Meccans to fight against the Islamic army. Some of the Quraysh responded to this invitation, took up arms and swore that they would not let the Prophet enter Mecca without a fight. When the Prophet peace be upon him learned that the Meccans were preparing to attack, he put the Islamic army in battle formation. He divided his army into four parts, the right arm, the left arm, the heart and the vanguard. The Prophet peace be upon him said to his army commanders, your meeting place with me is the hill of Safa. Do not fight with anyone unless he draws a weapon against you. Abu Sufyan then decided to go to Mecca to warn the Quraysh. The Prophet peace be upon him told him the following. Whoever takes refuge in the house of Abu Sufyan is given safety. Whoever takes refuge in the house of Hakim bin Hizam will be given safety. Whoever lays down his weapons, closes his door and takes refuge in his house is given safety. Those who saw Abu Sufyan coming began to insult him and march on him because he was a Muslim. Abu Sufyan said, Shame on you! Do not deceive yourselves. He has come to you with armies that you cannot stand against, that you cannot withstand. I have seen what you cannot see. I have seen countless soldiers, horses and weapons that no one can afford. Whoever enters Abu Sufyan's house is given security. Whoever leaves his weapons and enters his house and closes the door, he is given safety. Whoever takes refuge in the Kaaba, unarmed, is given safety. Zubair bin Awam, as the commander of the left column, began to enter Mecca from the upper side of Mecca. Everyone on that side had thrown their weapons out of the windows and shut themselves in their houses. Therefore, there was no clash. The right column entered from below Mecca under the command of Khalid bin Walid. A group of polytheists led by Abu Jahil's son Ikrimah, Umayyad's son Safwan, and Amr's son Suhail confronted Khalid bin Walid and started shooting arrows at the Muslims. Khalid bin Walid shouted to his soldiers, Fight them! Those who can be killed are to be killed. Do not kill those who are defeated and try to escape to their homes. Then the horsemen quickly rode towards the polytheists. And after about a minute of fighting, the polytheists began to scatter and flee. At the heart of the army, the Prophet peace be upon him, with his black turban and white banner, was reciting Surah al fat aloud and bowing his head in gratitude and humility to Allah as he marched towards Mecca. As he ascended the slope of Al-Azahir, the flash of swords was seen in the city of Mecca. The Messenger of Allah asked, What are these flashes? Was not Khalid bin Walid forbidden to fight? Didn't I forbid fighting? O Messenger of Allah, we believe that the polytheists tried to fight Khalid bin Walid. 
If they had not started the battle, Khalid would not have fought them. Khalid bin Walid was ordered not to kill anyone in Mecca. When the city calmed down, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, entered the city. After saluting Hajar al Aswad with his baton, he called out the takbir, Allahu Akbar. The Muslims began to shout the takbir in unison. Mecca shook with the sound of takbir. All the idols around the Kaaba were destroyed one by one. After the tawafs were done and the tawaf prayers were performed, the keys of the Kaaba were handed over to the Messenger of Allah. Bilal al Habishi radiallahu an climbed on top of the Kaaba and began to call for prayer in a loud voice. Mecca listened attentively to this call to prayer. Thank you for watching our video. Your support means the world to us as it helps us to continue creating quality content. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting and sharing it with your friends and family. We appreciate your engagement and feedback which motivates us to keep producing more content. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.